last year, February of 2016, when the tour came to town to LA, uh, I got the chance to measure Matt Kuchar's swing uh, right before the tournament. I think it was Monday or Tuesday before uh, the tournament at Riviera. Um, and he's a super nice guy. He got on the plate and hit some shots for us. And, and he came back to look at his swing after he'd hit some shots for us. And uh, this was him at impact with a driver. So you can see on the swing catalyst plate, he has 41% of his pressure on his lead foot and 59% of his pressure on his trail foot at impact. I'd never seen anything that looked like that before. Wow. Um, and so Matt Kuchar came back to me and says, hey, what do you think, man? What does it look like? And I'm like, honestly, Matt, I have never seen anything that looks like this before. Um, but, I mean, he looked at the, we had a, a launch monitor running at the same time and he looked at the numbers on the launch monitor. He's like, yeah, that's kind of what I like to see. The club head speed is pretty good. And the, he likes to hit little fades and his path was moving a little left with a face that was slightly open to the path. And I mean, his launch monitor numbers he liked. And so I was like, honestly, Matt, I have no idea. I've never seen anything like this. I wouldn't mess with it. Um, and so he went out that week and I think he finished seventh in the tournament or something like that. Um, uh, he gained a shot on the field with driving, total driving that week. Um, and Matt traditionally hasn't been the longest guy on tour. So in order to gain a shot on the field, you have to drive it pretty consistently and pretty straight at the distance he hits it to, uh, to gain a shot on the field. So, so basically what this chart is telling you is with a driver at impact, the average PGA tour player has 76% or 75.9% of their pressure on their front foot and 24% on their back foot, which makes sense, right? At impact, you want to have more pressure forward than backwards. I've heard 80, 20, I've heard a whole bunch of different numbers. This is telling us, uh, with a driver, it's 75.9 and 24.1 on average. Um, but me being the scientist that I am, when they gave me this chart and it only had the averages, which are the numbers in bold on the left, I went back to them and said, well, what are the standard deviations around those averages? And so to me, if you want to be an educated consumer and anyone ever gives you averages for anything, um, ask them what the standard deviation is around those averages, because it'll help you interpret those numbers a lot better. So they sent me this back, which is the chart that I show you in front of you here. Um, and it has the standard deviation of both of those numbers is 17.7. .7. Those numbers right up there, if you put all those numbers in your calculator, it will give you an average of 75.9 and a standard deviation of 17.7. .7. And so you can see that's a lot of variability. And so there's some guys on tour who have 99% of their pressure, or almost 100% of their pressure on their lead foot at impact. And there are guys on the tour that will have less than 50% of uh, their pressure on their lead foot at impact. And this guy and this guy are both making their living playing this game at the highest level. So they're obviously there's something that's working about doing that. And so if we take our chart and we try to get every single golfer we teach, let's say we walk down the line at a PGA Tour tournament and there's all these guys hitting balls with this amount of pressure under their lead foot at impact. And we said, no, 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 everybody has to get to 76. How many of these guys are we going to help? Uh, probably like one person, maybe this guy, right? This guy, you might help him. Um, and so what are you going to do to this guy? If somebody's hitting the ball pretty well at 99% and you try to get him to the average, you're probably going to mess him up. And what's going to happen to this guy? Well, probably going to mess him up. And so we need to really start figuring it out. What's different about this guy? So what is different? What can we measure that's different about a guy who hits it well at 99% of his pressure on his front foot at impact? And what's different about this guy? How can he hit it well with 37% of his pressure on his front foot at impact? And so this is where we need to create a system because, again, if we try to get everyone to the average, I think we're going to mess up more people than we help. Um, and so that's something we really need to start realizing. And that that's really what variability is and what I've been finding in the golf swing is that there's so many different ways to make this happen. We need a system to try to account for all this. And, but the average Joe like you and I um, better be swinging the way our body's designed or else uh, it's not going to be pretty out there. I hope that you enjoyed this quick preview for one of our sessions from the Golf Swing Summit. If you enjoyed this, plus you want to get a bunch of other education from some of the top instructors and biomechanists on what they do and why, check out the Golf swingsummit.com. This is an awesome opportunity to take a look at what's going on inside the minds of some of the leaders in the field.